Hi, my name is Susan Michael Strasser. I'm Senior Director of Human Resources for Health at ICAP at Columbia University, as well as Assistant Professor of Epidemiology at the Melman School of Public Health at Columbia University. The title of my talk is Nursing at the Front Lines of Safeguarding Public Health, Lessons from the 2014 to 2016 West Africa Ebola outbreak and COVID-19 pandemic that we are currently facing. The purpose of my talk is to share my reflections and lessons learned from working as a nurse and public health professional during a variety of disease outbreaks, including HIV AIDS, a resurgence of tuberculosis in the late 1980s and 1990s, and the emergence of multi-drug resistant TB, outbreaks of malaria, cholera, and most recently Ebola and the COVID-19 pandemic that we currently face. While the contexts have varied, and the diseases and necessary responses are quite different. One thing has been a constant. Nurses have been front and center in responding, in recognizing the problems, developing solutions, informing the community, and responding while also maintaining essential services. In underserved, low resource settings and countries, nurses have been central to the front line of the response. I'll present six lessons learned which I have gained and provide anecdotal evidence and statistics to highlight what I have learned over the years of my work. Before I get to the six lessons I've identified, I'd like to share information on a book by Barbara Wall and Arlene Keeling titled Nurses on the Front Lines. They found a number of common themes that emerged from reviewing disasters from the mid 1800s to the early 2000s. They found improvised activities at the local and the national level were important to a disaster response. Cooperation and collaboration amongst previously established professional and social networks, leadership and courage, spontaneous community support was evident, restoration of order out of chaos, the creation of healing narratives, and lastly, the crossing of cultural, geographic, and professional boundaries in response. The six areas or lessons that I have learned, I have started my research in this regard by reviewing Florence Nightingale's notes on nursing, and I'm calling these My Reflections on Nursing 2020. What I would like to say is that nursing is distinct. Nursing is innovative. Nursing is practical or pragmatic. Nursing is risky. Nursing is engendered. And lastly, nursing is central to public health. Lesson number one. Nursing is distinct. Nursing requires expert observation, action, and presence. Again, expert observation, action, and presence. I would like to highlight one example, and if you would like to look at this video, it is available online and the link is on the lower left. This is of a nurse in the center and in the upper right hand corner, you can see a woman who was being called to talk to her mother who was in the ICU and dying of COVID-19. And this encapsulates all of the aspects of the first lesson. And she says, we got a call and it was Tatiana, the nurse. She said, I can tell you by the signs and the way your mom is breathing that the end is probably near. And I said, well, can I talk to her? Tatiana, the nurse told Michelle to stand by. She said she'd suit up in protective gear and use her personal cell phone so Michelle could say goodbye to her mom via FaceTime. The sentence that Tatiana said really highlights lesson number one. I can tell you by the signs and the way your mom is breathing that the end is probably near. 
Lesson number two, nursing is innovative. This is a picture from a community care center that was put up in October of 2014 in Sierra Leone in response to the Ebola crisis and the inability of the Ebola treatment units, which were the standard of care, to keep up with the numbers of patients that were see being seen in West Africa. And what we found during that time that there was an incredible amount of innovation that arose to help respond to the crisis. As you can see in this picture are a number of people making tables or desks. And what these tables were used for, I find very innovative. They were used as a way to connect Ebola patients to their families, despite the need for strict quarantine. These tables were used like a shuffleboard to cross over from a green zone where the families were to a red zone where the healthcare workers were and patients. And families were able to put their meals for their family members onto this table that was then crossed over to the red zone using a shuffleboard type of stick to provide home cooked meals to the patients. This is a great example of innovation in action. Another example from 2014 Ebola outbreak is from another community care center where instead of having a high gate where you could not see patients, families were given a low-lying fence that clearly demarcated where it was safe for them to be, but also allowed them to reach out and, and speak to family members who were in isolation for Ebola. These are very practical, patient-centered innovations that emerge by nurses for patients and family during the crisis of 2014-2016. Lesson number three, nursing is pragmatic or practical. I like the word pragmatic. Johnson & Johnson, a longtime supporter of nursing, has compiled a series of nursing innovations to help improve care and safety during the COVID-19 response. From patenting a new type of high filtration mask to the development of a helpline to assist with reduction in unnecessary visits and ways to provide IV infusions from a distance. Nurses have shown their innovative leadership. Lesson number four, nursing is risky. This picture shows us at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic here in New York City, where I live. And this is a picture of a hospital in New York. And it is difficult to see, but I have put an arrow in front of not only the hospital building, but directly in front of a refrigerated truck that was brought in in June and July, I believe July, when we were at the height of the numbers of deaths and we could not handle the number of people dying and we had to have refrigerated trucks. This was a constant reminder to the community and to myself as a nurse what we were dealing with and the risks of all of the health workers on the front line. Papa and all of a, a group of researchers published recently about a pooled analysis of multiple studies that were published by April of this year that showed the risks to, to health workers. They found that anxiety was very prevalent, 23% prevalence rate across 12 studies. 
They found that depression was very prevalent as well with 22% of health workers showing signs of depression. And through subgroup analysis, they were able to show that there were higher rates amongst distinct groups. And those groups at higher risk for anxiety and depression were female health workers and nurses. This slide highlights why nursing is a risky profession. This presents from WHO the cumulative Ebola virus disease incidence rate for selected healthcare workers by type for three countries during the West Africa Ebola outbreak. And they compare a reference group of non-health workers from 15 years of age to older against medical doctors, nurses, and laboratory technicians. And what they found, first of all, is that all health workers are at significantly higher risk when they are working on the front lines of a disaster. But it also shows us that amongst healthcare workers, nurses have the highest risk ratio when, it, when we look back at the Ebola outbreak of 2014 to 2016. The Kaiser Family Foundation and The Guardian are working together to gather names and details of every health worker that has died in the United States from COVID-19 due to workplace exposure. This is known as the Lost on the Front Lines database. 31% of those documents had reported concerns of inadequate personal protective equipment. And as you can see here, roughly 35% of those documented were nurses. At least 82% lived in New York and New Jersey, two states hard hit at the outset of the pandemic. And the majority of the deaths, 122, were in April at, after the initial surge on the East Coast. Lesson number five, nursing is engendered. Historically, and even today, nursing is a largely female profession. In 2019, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics reported that 12% of nurses in the U.S. were men. While there are definitely more and more men entering the nursing profession, it is still very much a profession impacted by its gendered legacy. As you can see in this picture, of the COVID-19 task force for the United States. There are two women, but none of them are nurses. According to the American Hospital Association, only 6% of board members of hospital boards are nurses. And this is despite the fact that nurses have the largest amount of touch time with patients and are the profession most likely to execute policy changes that are made. Lastly, I want to say that nursing is central to public health. Florence Nightingale, who while doing so much to advance the quality of individual patient care, also championed and advocated for actions that would improve the health for all. And we can see here from her notes on nursing that she was thinking with a public health lens. And I'll just read the first part of this quote. Upon this fact, the most wonderful deductions have been strung. For a long time, an announcement something like the following has been going the round of the papers. More than 25,000 children die every year in London under 10 years of age. Therefore, we want a children's hospital. This spring, there was a prospectus issued and di divers other means taken to the effects. There is a great want of sanitary knowledge in women. Therefore, we want a women's hospital. Now, both the above facts are too sadly true, but what is the deduction? The causes of the enormous child mortality are perfectly well known. They are chiefly want of cleanliness, want of ventilation, want of whitewashing, in one word, defective household hygiene. The remedies are just as well known and among them is certainly not the establishment of a children's hospital. I want to 
want to wind down my talk by sharing a picture of a sticker that I saw on the hospital near where I work um, during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic here in New York. And it is a picture of Florence Nightingale with a mask on. And someone from 2020 took the time to make this sticker and place it on a hospital, saying on the right-hand side, year of the nurse, and Flo has a posse. Definitely Florence Nightingale's legacy still lives on today. I would like to end my talk today by saying that while each generation of nurses is faced with distinct and unique challenges, there is a common thread throughout the history of nursing. Looking back at Florence Nightingale's note on nursing, it is clear that nursing has always been distinct, innovative, pragmatic, risky, engendered, and central to public health. I firmly believe nurses working at the front lines of society's deepest challenges will continue to play a critical role in advancing society, making communities healthier, and as we continue to remove gender disparities and drive policies and programs that will address today's crises. Nurses today face many distinct challenges from force majeure, a legal term to describe situations beyond our control, such as earthquakes, to numerous man-made health crises emanating from war, famine, and climate change. Thank you.